A federal high court in Abuja has refused to sack Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River State over his defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. And on the 2023 general elections, the PDP zoning committee has reportedly thrown the party's presidential ticket open, kicking out zoning arrangements. This is Plus TV Politics, and I'm Kofi Bartels. Once again, welcome to Plus Politics. The Federal High Court in Abuja yesterday uh, declined to declare vacant the governorship seat of Governor Benedict Ayade over his affection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress, APC. Justice Taiwo Taiwo held that the governors and their deputies can only be removed from office in line with sections 180, 188, and 189 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, which stipulates that elective office holders can only be removed from office on account of death, resignation, or impeachment. Uh, the Honorable Justice Taiwo Taiwo said that since defection is not one of the constitutional provisions to remove any governor, no court has the power to insert such into the Supreme Law. The judge, however, agreed that defection from a winning party to a losing party is, in his words, immoral, improper, and condemnable. And of course, uh, these are words that have been used by uh, justices of in the Supreme Court in the Atiku Abubakar case. Well, joining us to discuss this is Basita. Uh, Mr. Basita is the publicity secretary of um, the Eswal Embattled All Progressives Congress in Cross River State. Mr. Ta, good evening to you. Thank you very much for your time and welcome to Plus Politics. Hello. Yes, Ms. Abasita, good evening. Thank you for your time. Yes, thank you. I am um, a point of correction there. I, I am no longer the state public secretary of the party. I was, but now I have been appointed senior special assistant to the governor on research and policy orientation by the grace of God. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate the, the correction there. Um, but uh, we, we know that you, you have a lot to say about this, so we'll move on. What are your, what's the mood in the in government house uh, at Calabar, which is uh, on Leopoldville Avenue, just opposite the legendary Hope Waddle uh, Training Institution? I'm sure um, that uh, uh, the mood in government house is upbeat. Yeah. Uh, the mood in government house is really upbeat. Yeah, the expectations uh, among members of the people of uh, Progressive Congress have been high in terms of uh, what uh, exactly the governor is able to put down in terms of development. And um, that is why yesterday we saw wild tribulations and celebrations everywhere when the court decided to end the way of existence. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there was a palpable tension in Cross River State, indeed within the All Progressives Congress and indeed in Government House, that the governor will be removed or given at least the same treatment that his counterpart in neighboring Ebony State, which is just a few kilometers from Cross River State, is um, David Umahi, who was earlier removed by the court, although he has a reprieve from the appeal court. I'm, I'm sure there was some sort of tension and apprehension. Would I be right to say that? Normal. There, there was there was a weave of apprehension, uh, particularly among uh, members of the All Progressive Congress in such a state, um, and also uh, in reference to what happened in the case of the National Government of the Mind of a Boy State. You know, there was tension, there was apprehension. A lot of people had thought that. Uh, the embarrassment uh, method on the mind will also come the way of the residency uh, of Governor Yadi. But as God may wish, and of course, as uh, uh, the, the, the right 
of ejaculation, uh, uh, you know, was found to have uh, prevailed. That tension died down and uh, gave way for the wide relation and celebration I talked about here. All right. All right. Um, I listened to um, the, the, the lead counsel to Governor uh, Ben Ayade uh, of the Upper Progressives Congress, Chief Mike Ozekome, S.A.N., uh, give his own, his own reaction and reasons why he felt uh, the judge gave uh, such a verdict. He talked, to, talked about judicial rascality um, uh, and all that. This is the same judge. Um, my Lord, the Honorable Justice Taiwo Taiwo, who had uh, um, previously sacked 20 lawmakers from Cross River State. We're talking about 18 members of the Cross River State House of Assembly and two uh, House of Representatives members from Cross River State. Um, were, were you surprised and um, are you worried about the sort of conflicting judgments coming, um, not just from the Federal High Court? in Nigeria as a whole, as an institution, but also from the Court of Justice, Taiwo Taiwo, with all due respect to his, um, his lordship. Yes. Um, executive, I mean, judicial rationality, as uh, uh, Michael Zuckerman uh, quite rightly put it, was what we saw, you know, played out in that judgment, especially what we saw of uh, uh, that, that of uh, the government of the state, and uh, moving forward, what also happened about the, the members of the Court of the House of Assembly, the APC members of the Court of the House of Assembly. And I just think that, uh, I just think that if uh, uh, Governor Ayadis Council, talking about uh, Mike and Dr. McCann, did not point it out, uh, you know, in the court, perhaps, Perhaps we have seen a repeat of the Umayyi embarrassment. I call it Umayyi embarrassment, not to Umayyi. There are embarrassments to uh, the, the, the lordship and, of course, to the judiciary. You know, when, when it happens like this, like this, you, you see Nigerians, you know, coming out to express their resentment, you know, over. Uh, the accident of uh, the position. Now, not every, now not every judge or every, uh, uh, in all of the jury. But when we see a situation like this, where the law is supposed to be the law, okay, uh, turn upside down, a case that uh, we rightly call rationality. I mean, it gives a, uh, room for some kind of uh, uh, interrogation as to whether or not we have a future for this country as far as the solution is concerned. Mm. Uh, and uh, the, the law, the law, the law quite actually spells out what it takes to remove a sitting governor. You know, apart from impeachment, it is death. But when all of these you yeah, don't understand, I'm, 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 not, I'm not there. I mean, I wonder why you sit down and want to take tension in the system by pronouncing uh, the after of the governor on mere uh, uh, pre election issues. It is wild, it is rational, it is uh, unfounded. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Basita, um, uh, you know, the, the, the People's Democratic Party in Cross River State has come out to express its uh, dissatisfaction at the ruling or the judgment of uh, Milord the Honorable Justice Taiwo Taiwo. And indeed, it's saying that they are going to appeal this ruling. And they said, and I quote, it's the People's Democratic Party in Cross River State, um, that. Um, that the judgment of yesterday by the Federal High Court in sitting in Abuja is yet another successful exploration, these are their words, yet another successful exploration of the depth of legal jurisprudence in uncharted territory. Um, the saying that they want to assure us, and indeed you of the APC, that this judgment is only a step in the overall picture envisaged by their lawyers. So they said they already foresaw that this was going to happen and that they're going to go on appeal to ensure that Be Benedict Ayade is kicked out as governor of Cross River State. W what do you say to this? 
Well, nobody stops them from testing the water. I, I see them as testing the water, traditionally. But then, is it on a familiar terrain? The issue at stake is about removing a sitting governor. You understand? And um, it, uh, they say it's about defection. And there are instances for which the governor can defect from one party to another. With all of these precedents following, were there issues within the People's Democratic Party that warranted the uh, Senator Professor Ben Ayade to defect? That is a question, that is the first question we must look at. Yes, there were issues. Even at the national echelon of the party. A matter that even went, saw them go to the Supreme Court. And there is a subsisting Supreme Court judgment. And where there is a crack in the wall of a particular party, from national down, members can go their different ways. That actually happened. And that necessitated his excellency's defection from the PDP to the UK. So I am seeing that the PDP just wants to test the water. They have the right, they have the power to test the water. You understand? But then, how does it fare in our democracy? How does it help to deepen our democracy? Tell me to the Supreme Court. We're only wasting the, 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 the time of the court. You know, without prejudice to what the Supreme Court can hold as verdict, I can beat my chest and say that the, AP, the PDP has not, you know, had it, had it had well, going well, to try to touch the waters in this perspective. The governor had the right, at the time, to defect. It was on a familiar ground to defect. There were cracks in the walls of the PDP. And that necessitated or warranted his defection from the PDP to the APC. So I think uh, the PDP should stop crying gold where, where there is not. That's my take on it. The, the provisions on, on what uh, could constitute. Um you know, uh, the departure or who could, could permit uh, legislators elected on a platform of one party or members of the executive uh, from de departing or decamping from that party are very clear. When you say there was a crack in the, in the People's Democratic Party, the, the constitution talks about a split. It also talks about a merger. So I, I don't think it talks about a crack. What crack specifically are you referring to? Yeah, when you talk about crime, you talk about crisis. The situation where the administration of the party is put in jeopardy because of the, the, the tendencies that, that arise. That is exactly what happened with the PDP. It was okay, for the national down. Just like what happened when we had the new PDP in uh, the, in, uh, the 20, 2018. I saw people moving, people like Minister Mechley and the rest, who moved and formed a new PDP. That is exactly what happened in the last uh, uh, one year or so. You know, there was such a disjointed group of, uh, uh, a, a, a disjointed structure that wouldn't allow well meaning politicians, people who want their political destination to feel. To remain in, in the PDP. And so for his excellency who thought that it was it was not about the PDP, but it was about the well being of the Kosovo people. He had to pull out because he needed to continue with the, the, the development uh, uh, aspiration of uh, the, the majority of Kosovo. Mm. So he needed a platform to stabilize his government and took Russia out of the wood. Mr. Batis, 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 Batis. Yes, yeah, but I, I'm trying to find out from you, sir, what exactly was this, was the, was a crack, you know, in, in the party? Was it, was it a crack in, in the PDP in Russia state, 
Was it a pack of crack in the PDP nationally? Because even the example you're citing, which is um, talking about the new PDP and the fact that Amechi, Saraki, and co moved from the PDP to the APC to form that party, um, it was clear that th there were two PDPs. You know, <laughs> they, they went and formed their own PDP. But, but I, I don't remember that happening when uh, Governor Yade uh, moved from the APC, from the PDP to the APC. And in fact, even before Governor Mai Malaburi, who was then the, uh, the Ketika chairman of the Extraordinary Convention um, uh, Planning Committee of, of, the, of the APC, visited Government House with Timmy Press, Silva and Co. Days before that, or hours before that, the PDP had visited Governor Benedict Bene Ayade in Calabar to try and persuade him to remain in the party. You're aware of that. So what, what yeah, crack are you talking about? I don't want to go into mentioning names. But if you, if you take a closer look at the, the historical antecedent of uh, that detection, you will realize that some national leaders of the PDP, just as they came to appeal to His Excellency not to defend, some of them were the ones who initiated the crisis. I don't know if you remember some national officers of the PDP who were exchanging tantrums with His Excellency at the point, calling him all sorts of names and all of that. Those were not considerations. Those were national officers of the PDP. And that alone clearly tells the story of the crisis. I remember at the point where His Excellency was called the boy boy. He was called several names. I mean, the government of the state. He was strangulated in terms of the administration of the party in the state. His national, the national officers, the officers who were in the national election of the party were no longer given their right of way. So I think that, I think that you don't need, you don't need a civil war. You don't need to, 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 uh, 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 it has become a full-blown civil war before you call it a crack in the national economy. The moment you begin to have some national officers fighting against each other, it tells the story of the crack. All right, but, but, but the, the Nigerian constitution does say um, specifically that there must be a split in the party, but the PDP they didn't have a split. And um, some would argue with you that uh, these disagreements and these uh, internal wranglings are part of democracy. You have it in parties all over the, the world and in different political parties in Nigeria. But a split is when a party has factions. One faction says, I'm going my way. The other faction says, we are going our way. You understand. But, but we, we've not witnessed a split in the People's Democratic Party, if ever there was, since 2015. But you're talking about a crack. And, and, and I'm asked again, is this in Cross River State or nationally? You know, you talked about some national members of the party, um, you know, making some utterances against the governor. But, but this in, is not a in, split. In, Was there a split in, in the PDP, State. sir? I just have to be explicit. In Zampara State, Matawale was in the middle of that fight. In a boy state, David Omai was visited with similar crisis. In Crossroads Rural State, His Excellency Senator Professor Ben Ayadi was met with such an embarrassing situation that warranted him to flow. There are so many cracks like that here and there. So the, the mere fact that there were tendencies that propelled people to go their separate ways, like I said, tells the story of the crack. In, uh, let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me recall that experience. APC had more of issues than what the PDP had then. But the ability for members to remain intact and not the wounds, not sure the wounds that were, was what kept the APC intact. So for the PDP, it was 
things fall apart. They said that could no longer hold. And when you have a situation where people become so disenchanted with the central system that they are the to go their different ways. I mean, you 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 can't stop them. It's a national crisis. It didn't just happen about cross river state. And like I mentioned, it happened nationally. It touched the governor of the uh, uh, state. It touched the governor of Zamfara state and others. Okay. All right. Um, um, I do remember uh, that when Governor Ben Ayade um, gave his speech uh, alongside uh, ranking members of the APC, including uh, um, Mai Malaboni of Yobe State, Timmy Press Silva, and co., he never mentioned the crack in the party. And I, I'd, I, I want to assume that, sir, you may have been uh, uh, either or at that meeting or you're aware of the statements by the governor. He said he wanted to join hands with the center to take Nigeria higher. The governor never mentioned uh, anything like a crack. But staying with that issue of a crack, this has to do with the legislators of the party um, or of any party moving uh, from the, that party on which, they, on which platform they won the election to another party. The, 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 the ruling or the judgment of Justice Taiwo Taiwo um, uh, so, some weeks, some days ago regarding the 20 cross university lawmakers who were sacked uh, by his court still stands. And of course, you were talking about the issue of a crack. So I'd like to just go to section 68, subsection 1G of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. And uh, Mr. Basita, it states that a member of the Senate or House of Representatives shall, shall vacate his seat in the House of which he is a member, being a member, if being a person whose election to the House was sponsored by a political party, in this case the PDP, he becomes a, a member of another political party before the expiration of the period for which the House was elected, provided that his membership of the latter political party is not as a result of a division in the political, political party of which he was previously a member or a merger of two or more political parties or factions by one of which he was previously sponsored. And I know you're well aware of this. So uh, what do you expect to happen with those seats that have been declared vacant, 18 of them in the cross River State House of Assembly and two in the House of Representatives? One issue I wouldn't like to comment on. The reason being that the matter is already before the appeal. Yes, because it will be subjugated to begin to preempt uh, the decision of uh, the appeal court and will allow that matter to be exhausted by the appellate court before we can make comments on, on, on it. Yes, uh, because uh, whatever comments I, I may make now may stand to uh, jeopardize or um, make uh, the chances of the lawmaker. So I don't want to be caught in that way. Yes, I will allow the appellate court to uh, itself in the respect of handling that matter. All right, uh, Mr. Basita, Governor Ben, ben Ayadu has been accused of, of, of applying underhand tactics. In, in dealing with the situation of the uh, 20 lawmakers, particularly those of the Cross River House of Assembly, um, which is not far from Government House, by, by, by unleashing fully armed policemen to, to, to surround and, and block access to the House of Assembly at a time when you know, judicial activity or legislative activity is of very, very great importance. What do you say to this? security officer of the state. I think uh, it is its responsibility to make sure that when we have tension, when we have cases of apprehension and security uh, breaches, uh, he steps in to make sure he does his such uh, tension. Um, I remember when the issue of the judgment came up, you know, there the, were tensions here and there, and it uh, was noted that uh, uh, there was going to be breakdown of uh, law and order. I mean, at that point, you you you, you won't wait for a uh, uh, total breakdown of law and order for you to put security measures in place, you know, to check whatever tension that has been. 
I think it's actually she was only being proactive to stop whatever would stand as a breakdown of law and order. Uh, for one to accuse him of uh, taking sides or uh, trying to stop a judicial process, I, I think uh, a, such uh, an accusation doesn't hold water. It doesn't hold water at all. Okay, so you're saying Governor Yade ordered the policemen to go surround the House of Assembly and prevent anyone from, from accessing it, is what you're saying? No, 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 no. The, the House, the House, the House, as I speak to you, yeah, they, they can have the accession. Members of, people have been going, the workers are there. No, I'm, I'm are, saying, at, at the time it happened, you're saying that Governor Ben Ayade ordered, ordered policemen to go surround the place. To surround the place. Yes, you're saying that at the time it happened, How? this was after the, the initial judgment that the governor ordered these policemen there, is what you're saying. But you're saying he did it to yeah, forestall like for like breakdown like of law and order. No, you, you, you just said it, sir. Honorable Basita, you just said that he, he, he you just was, said. Like I said, which yeah. would you prefer? When we, when, we have, when we have a case of high level tension, what would you do? I okay, so but, but you but you you are admitting I am not arguing that fact. That to be accused of being uh, the player. Okay, but you are admitting the, you're, you're admitting you're admitting right here uh, on plus politics uh, that the governor indeed it was who ordered the police to go cordon off the state house of assembly, but that he did it he did it, he did it to forestall a breakdown of law and order. That being accused of Allowing security breach. Okay, but you are you are you are saying that he it was he. Okay, but you are saying that he was the one who ordered the police to go do that. Yeah, but I'm saying you are saying that he was the one who gave the order to the police. The chiefs. What did the police go there to do? Okay, okay, okay. Just want to be sure. Were they killing people? Were they chasing people away? No, no such thing happened. It's a civil environment, like I say. People have been assessing the place so and fro. Okay. Yes. So when there is tension, I think it is a place of the chief security officer of the state to put a stop to that tension. All right. I don't All know right. whether there is any worker, anybody who has come out to say that he was attacked in the course of trying to assess that arena. Nobody. Nobody. No. Okay. So, so. Even uh, the lawmakers. You, you, you've rightly said, uh, um, Honorable Basi, that um, the the case of the of the um, regarding the sack or removal of the twenty lawmakers, eighteen of them from the House of Assembly in Crossway State, is still on. It's on appeal. Um, what do you expect to happen if that appeal fails? Like I said, we will make comments when the time comes. No, but I'm now, saying if if it fails, we're not caught in the, in the web of Subjudice. We okay. comment because the matter is still with the appeal. All right. So, so some are suspecting the governor is, is afraid of being impeached. That's why he's he's uh, at um, every small with every small ruling. That's another wild allegation. That's an unfounded allegation. I mean, it's possible if, if if the PDP takes over the house, it's just a simple thing for him to be impeached. Very simple. Are you well, not concerned about that, Robert? Again, I call it an unfounded allegation. No, it, 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 it's 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 a scenario. I mean that it's possible that um, Governor Ben Ayade, it's not over for him. It's not over until he can be sure that he has his APC lawmakers back. And if that doesn't happen, and the PDP lawmakers get into that house within seconds, he could be he could be impeached. Well, I do not know. All I know is that there are procedures for impeachment of the governor. And I think that beyond that, we must look at the security implications of what has just happened. And I think that what you have said regarding uh, deployment of uh, policemen is to checkmate the issue of security threat and breakdown of law and order. Okay. Mr. Basita, before we go, uh, what are your thoughts on, because it seems uh, uh, a majority of Nigerians, from my observation, um, are against politicians elective, occupying elective offices, moving from the party on whose platform they won the election 
to another party. They feel that they're stealing the mandate the people gave to the party that won the election. Do you think that the Nigerian constitution should be amended to ensure that any governor um, who moves from a party on whose platform he or she won an election to another party will be, will, will, should consider himself out of office? Do you, do you think that that should be an amendment brought to the first, Nigerian constitution? First and foremost, let's look at our democracy. Is our democracy different enough to allow people politics of ideology? I mean, can I become a liberal democrat and remain at that level without thinking of being a conservative or, or a democrat? That is what we are looking at. And I think that gradually we are getting there. Our democracy is gradually taking shape to become a deepened democracy. The moment we are able to learn to, to take hold of our ideology, I mean, being a conservative and remain as a conservative, being a progressive and remain as a progressive, the moment we get to that point, this issue of defection, the end of defection will arise. But all the same, I think that, uh, constitutionally speaking, we, 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 need, we need to uh, bring in a, 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 a soft landing in terms of constitutional amendment to allow people the liberty to move at this point until such a time when we are able to define ideology for our democracy. But, but Mr. Mr. Ita, defining ideologies is not a function of the constitution. That is the prerogative of the political parties to do. And um, if, if they decided not want to play politics of ideology, we cannot fault that uh, on the constitution. So are you saying that, are you saying that um, this, uh, uh, such an idea of, of, of punishing uh, uh, politicians who um, win a, an election on one, with one party and move to the losing party, this idea of punishing them by stripping them of office is good, but it should be done when we have uh, an ideological policy. Is that what you're saying? That is a, is a good one, but it should only be done when we have ideological politics, the politics of ideology. Is, is that what you're saying, sir? All we need to do, like I said, is for political parties to be spent in terms of what they think. I think that is the whole talk about ideology. Where political parties are able to, to enforce discipline within its own or their fold, I think members will be moving up and down. And by that, we'll be inking gradually towards the issue of ideology. Okay. Okay. It, 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 it depends on political parties. Hmm. All right. So, so are you, are you therefore agreeing with um, uh, the statements or the statement of um, Milord Honourable Justice Taiwo Taiwo, who said in his ruling that defection from a winning party to a losing one is quote immoral, improper, and condemnable. Are you agreeing with him? No, 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 no. I, 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 I do not. I don't seem to agree completely with uh, the lordship on that. Okay? You know, because, like I say, it will be, it will be such a wild thing to do to begin to think that Nigerian politicians at this early stage of our democracy to be able to be, you know, depend as to which party to belong to remain in a particular political party. I and, and I, I can assure you that when if you carry if you carry a particular idea of the development and you do not have your political party giving you a platform to ventilate your idea, you can move. And especially when there seems to be a crisis within the party, you can move at this point. Nothing stops you from moving. But I am saying that if political parties are able to enforce discipline, okay, and get their acts together, lessen the level of crisis within their phone, they will be able to keep an army of followers and supporters and members. All right. Who will completely, by their actions, disagree with the issue of the sector. Okay. All right.
Uh, Mr. Basita, thank you very much for your time. It's been a very uh, interesting conversation with you. And uh, I'm not surprised you. you are Senior Special Assistant to the Governor on Research. Uh, congratulations on your new appointment and we wish you all the best. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. That's uh, Basita, former uh, Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress in Cross River State and of course uh, Senior Special Assistant to the Governor um, on of Cross River State on, on research. Uh, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now on past politics. When we return, we discuss the possibility of zoning in the People's Democratic Party. We'll be right back.